Joining me now is Congressman Marsha Blackburn, the Vice Chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Absolutely. Good to be with you. Thank you. Have you and, and fellow members of the House uh, been giving greater attention or, or getting more briefings on grid security, specifically because of what happened at that substation last April in California? Yes, I think it is fair to say more attention has been paid to this issue. When you look at the attack uh, that took place in California, when you look at the threat of EMP and you realize that grid security is an issue, it does merit more attention. Now, we heard earlier from Representative uh, Henry Waxman. He's a fellow member of the Energy and Commerce Committee. He said in December that the electric grid is not adequately protected from physical attacks, specifically in the case of terrorism. Can we say that that's the case? I mean, how seriously are we taking terrorism as a threat to the power grid? Well, my hope is that we will put more attention on all of our critical infrastructure, whether it is our nuclear power plants or whether it is our electric power generation system and the power grid. All of that deserves a little bit more attention. Now, one of the things I think that is fair to say is that industry probably has been in the lead on this, finding ways to protect the grid and sharing information. It probably is the Department of Energy, the EPA, and some of the federal agencies that have not acted as quickly or have processed information. And my hope is now with a coordinated effort that is out there, you're going to see more attention put on it between industry and the federal agencies. Now, between those two sides, I think it's interesting to try to get at whether it's even possible. You know, the Wall Street Journal recently reported that if terrorists destroy just nine of 55,000 electrical transmission substations, the entire U.S. could be blacked out for months even. Are there any security measures being taken, or is it even possible to take security measures that would prevent terrorism from being able to attack these targets, or is it simply right. just a question of doing the best we can with limited resources and hoping that this doesn't get repeated with greater success from the terrorist perspective? Right. And I think that putting the attention on the substations is important. And when you look at the over 50,000 substations, as you just said, and quoted, and their placement around the country. If you don't have a prioritized system of how to deal with those and handle the integration of that into the power grid, then you really have, uh, that is kind of step number one and a problem that is there. How are you going to prioritize those? What is the integration going to be and what is the communication? going to be to prevent those. Now, one of the things that is coming forward from the uh, substation, electric substation coordinated effort is doing uh, some role playing and disaster planning. And they just recently completed an exercise called Grid X1 where they go through and they're mimicking, doing uh, kind of a war room, if you will, and mimicking an attack and how they would carry forward with making certain that we kept our power up. But I have to tell you, it is of tremendous concern to me when you look at the vulnerabilities for our nuclear power generation facilities and also for our, for our power grid, uh, the vulnerabilities there for cyber attack, for sabotage and uh, the lack of preparation that is there. When you talk about security, this is one of the areas that certainly deserves more attention. Congressman, before we go, do you have any inclination based upon what you've already uh, found out on this attack, based upon previous public briefings, who was responsible for this attack? We, we haven't been able to get to that answer yet. No, we have not been able to get that answer, and we are very hopeful when we have our briefing that we're going to be able to get a little bit more information, and hopefully uh, they know by now exactly who was responsible for this attack, and the hope would be that they are going to face the felony penalties that should be um, placed upon them, and I, I think that also it is one of those areas where we hope that FERC and NERC and the power distributors and generators are learning from this. And as I said, as they have, 
are beginning a coordinated effort. You know, maybe a little bit late for some of us, what we would have liked to have seen, but at least they're beginning that effort that they will increase that information share and communication to help make certain that we do not have an attack on the grid that puts us into a blackout situation that could last days, weeks, or months. All right, Congressman Blackburn, thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. Thank you it. so much. It's astonishing and a little disturbing how little we know about those who carried out this attack in San Jose. Were they terrorists? Were they disgruntled employees? Maybe even agents of a foreign government? Until the FBI concludes its investigation, there's just no way of knowing for sure. But if we don't ask the tough questions and illuminate the truth now, it seems we could literally end up in the dark. The truth often lies somewhere between the sensational and the mundane, and our mission is to find it. This has been Real News Investigates. Thanks for watching, America. Good night.